conglomerations of carbon-based chemicals. I will hand you off to Will. Thank you. Okay, so for those of you who were here last week, do you have a general idea of what I was talking about? Okay, yeah. I see some nods. Oh, right, microwave stuff. Microwaves, yes. Very specific form and a very special form. So what Robert has wanted me to talk about, the cosmic microwave background radiation. And what, if I were to be as brief as possible, this is basically the oldest form of radiation that we can observe in the entire universe. And because it is the oldest, it also is the most distant part of the universe that we can observe. So it's called a cosmic microwave background. I'm going to say CMB for short. It is essentially a faint glow of microwave radiation that fills the entire universe uh, all in an almost completely uniform way. It's important to talk about where exactly this comes from. So when the universe was in its youth, um, it was extremely different, both in its appearance and, of course, obviously, its temperature. So, obviously, at the, be at the very beginning of time, the universe was immensely hot. And as a result, it was, too, it was actually too hot for atoms to form. At this point, we had protons and we had neutrons and we had electrons, but they were not in the form of atoms. And the problem with that is, basically, since atoms had not formed yet, every electron in the universe was essentially free. It was, it was, it was free, it could flow wherever it wanted. And the incredibly uh, pestiferous thing about free electrons is that they can absorb and scatter any wavelength of light. Now, electrons that are bound to an atomic nucleus, they can only do that to specific wavelengths. But at this point in the universe, all of the electrons were free, and so light light could not travel very far without getting absorbed and or scattered. But basically, the early universe was, it wasn't completely invisible, but what it essentially was was sort of a, a faint light fog, more accurately a plasma. What happened was eventually, as the universe got larger, it also got cooler. And it cooled to roughly 2,000 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature in which the laws of physics allow for atoms to form. And once atoms were formed, electrons, most of the electrons in the universe became bound to atomic nuclei, and they were no longer able to absorb and scatter all every wavelength of light. And as a result, light, electromagnetic radiation, was able to flow much more freely, and the universe became much more visible. And that, these newly emancipated photons, are the exact same photons that we observe today. Now, an, an interesting fact is that we observe, we observe it now as microwaves, but it's very likely that when these photons first uh, came into existence, they were probably not in the form of microwaves. They were actually probably more, probably closer to the visible spectrum. And as a result, the universe, rather than being black for the most part, was actually more of an orange color. But as, as time goes on, the universe has expanded. The universe expands so fast, it actually expands faster than light itself. And as a result, wavelengths actually get stretched out over time. And so visible light became stretched out into red light, and then eventually infrared light, and then eventually microwaves, and, which is what we observe today. An interesting thing is, as the universe continues to expand, this type of radiation will get stretched out continuously, and it will eventually get to the point where it's completely undetectable. Now, when this, this probably won't happen for a very long time, but it is uh, something we're thinking about. So that's one interesting fact. Are there, are there any questions or comments so far? Can you, can you um, hand me my little beverage there? Thank you. I'm not sure if this is a relative topic, but all right, so gamma radiation comes out and then it comes back in hitting Earth at all directions. Does it mean the gamma radiation bounced off the edge of the universe if or gamma, just other if objects? Gamma ray, if gamma radiation, I mean, not gamma radiation, if, microwave if gamma radiation. gamma radiation did the same thing as microwave, did the same thing to Earth as uh, microwaves. We would all be dead. Long gone. It's hard to demonstrate this. All right, <laughs> here we go. So this is the Big Bang, right? It explodes and then yeah. everything just kind of goes out. So <laughs> this is super hard to explain. So when the stuff comes along, does it end up bouncing off the end of the universe? It's all hitting Earth at the same time, so something must be bouncing off of each other in order to be hitting Earth at all the same time. Okay, everybody relax. <laughs> <laughs> I have five minutes left. I'm, I will explain that to you guys. Hey, is there any other, any other points? So, last thing about microwaves.
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this, go off of a point that Robert made yesterday. But you know, there was a very point. good chance that when we first discovered this, we would have concluded that this was just bird feces. I'm certainly <laughs> glad that we discovered this instead. Thank you very much. Woo!